Hello everyone. In this short video, we're going to use population genetics to model how evolution works. By the end of this video, you should be able to do the following. Differentiate a population from a species, and discuss the four factors that can cause changes in allele frequencies. Evolution is the is change in allele frequency from one generation to the next. Remember, the alleles are the genes that we inherit from our parents. We study changes in allele frequencies by looking at population genetics. A population is a group within which one is likely to find a mate. While a species, you can see up there on the top, a species is a group of individuals that can interbreed, a population is a much smaller group. For example, these Amish people could potentially reproduce with any other human beings of the right age and sex, but they tend not to. They mate locally within their population. And to understand how evolution works, we can look at the four factors that can cause changes in allele frequencies in a population. Mutation. Mutation is a change in the DNA. It's the only way that new variation can be introduced, and they're very rare. Gene flow. Gene flow is the exchange of genes between populations. Most animals choose their mates from outside of close family groups. When individuals move into new areas, Gene flow increases variation within a population. Migration works this way too. Moving to a new place distributes alleles. Genetic drift is random changes in allele frequencies due to small population size. Small populations isolated by geography or culture can accumulate random changes. And if a population is small enough, some alleles just don't get passed down. Natural selection is the observation that adaptive traits tend to predominate over time in a population, and the environment plays a key role in determining which traits are favorable. In this graphic here, we can see that some of the beasties are tall and some of the beasties are short. The short ones don't get the food. Therefore, they're not contributing any genes to the next generation. Natural selection is hard to observe in humans, so to model how all this comes together, Together, we're going to use cockroaches as an example. Let's say you wake up in the morning, you find the sink infested with cockroaches. So what do you do? You get out some insecticide and you spray. Most of the cockroaches die, but a couple survive. A month later, you figure your problem solved, you come down, and the sink's infested again. Where did all those cockroaches come from? That's right, cockroach sex. So these new cockroaches that survived are a little bit different. They had whatever random mutation that allowed them to survive. So now they're mating locally with other survivors in this greatly reduced gene pool. That's called genetic drift that acted on that random mutation. Repeat this cycle a couple times and the cockroaches are sitting there huffing your insecticides because they've evolved. You've altered the nature of their environment by making it toxic. So natural selection has favored your new chemical resistant cockroaches. Once they take over your house, they move on to your neighbors, and they mate with their cockroaches. That's gene flow. So by looking at population genetics, we can see how a species can evolve. If you have any questions or lingering concerns, I hope you'll come to office hours. I have snacks.